Hello there folks, Netflix's Tomb Raider Legend of Lara Croft is officially live on Netflix now. It comprises 8 episodes and is based on the same continuity as Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider games. The series picks up after the events of the Tomb Raider Shadow of the Tomb Raider video game, which is the last in the trilogy of Crystal Dynamics reboot for the series. We see the return of familiar names from the video games like Sam, Jonah, and Abby, which will certainly resonate with the fans of the video games. The Tomb Raider series is long overdue for a good ad adaptation outside of the video games, which are generally considered iconic. From the silly Angelina Jolie adaptation to the mostly forgettable film featuring Alicia Vikander that sought to more closely resemble the Crystal Dynamic games, they truly failed to capture the essence of what makes the Tomb Raider franchise so great. This series takes us in typical Tomb Raider fashion through the various locations around the world, some of which are both familiar and unfamiliar to the fans of the franchise. Lara deals with the guilt of her past as she tries to reconcile with her present. In true Lara Croft fashion, there is a lot of intrigue present combined with a girl boss shenanigans that our female protagonist is famous for. The show has been created under the wings of powerhouse studio animations, who are the folks responsible for the hit Netflix series Castlevania, which is yet another adaptation of a well-loved video game. The art style and animation have their signature touch and are instantly recognizable. While this is definitely not their best effort, the animations in the show are actually pretty decent. Having become a solo adventurer after the events of the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Lara is forced to get back to her routes as an ancient artifact is stolen, but what awaits her is a much deeper and darker conspiracy. In this video, we will shed some light to a season breakdown and explain the endings of this Netflix show, so strap in as we go raid some tombs. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Yeah. Season 1 Plot Recap So, we're right at the start. We're treated with a flashback about a time many years before the events of the first Tomb Raider game, where our heroine is shipwrecked on the fabled island of Yamatai, the abode of Queen Himiko. Lara had traveled to an ancient place called House of the Jaguar in Chile. With Roth, who was her father's friend's help, Lara had managed to secure a mysterious jade box that she had brought back home to England. We go to the present day. Lara is no longer the novice Tomb Raider she once was and after all the perilous journeys she has been through, she is presented to us as a grizzled veteran. All is, however, not well, as she is plagued with the memories of her mentor and friend Roth, whose death she still blames herself for during the events of the first game. However, after much convincing by her friends Jonah and Abby, who are both mainstays from the game, Lara returns from Peru back home. Once home, she decides to get rid of all the trophies and memorabilia from the various raids and adventures she has been through. She believes that this is the only way in which she can move move ahead in her life and leave the past behind. Despite some apprehension from her friends, she is headstrong in her decision to do so and begins their auction. The auction, which is held in her ancestral home of Croft Manor, is however disrupted when a mysterious man steals the jade box she had retrieved in the flashback. Although she is confused about the reason why the man decided to steal the item as she believes it to be of little importance, Lara is soon made privy to the importance of the artifact. This leads her to embark on yet another harrowing chase across the globe against the wishes of her cook and friend Jonah. After learning that there is another treasure box of a similar kind in China, she attempts to circumvent her enemy by moving one step ahead and trying to get her hands on it. During her travels, she learns the artifacts that this mysterious man was after are called Peril Stones, which were ancient mythical Chinese items. As she journeys through various locations around the globe on a wild goose chase, trying to gather the stones before they fall into the hands of this thief, she comes across a mythical fox spirit who helps her get her hands on one of the boxes. However, due to certain events, she loses it to the thief. She, however, learns the name of her quarry is Charles Devereaux. And unlike Trinity and its members, Lara has no prior gripe with him. Devereaux simply wishes to gather these stones to wreak havoc among those who wronged him, even though he doesn't understand the full extent of their nature, including the drawbacks of using them. Lara struggles through various trials and tribulations, eventually managing to gather all the stones before Devereaux 
Devereaux. However, in typical fashion, she loses them once again to the villain. Devereaux then assembles the gems into the Sword of Divinity, finally bringing forth the powers of the stones. Ill omens and natural calamities begin occurring around the world due to this act as the evil that these artifacts kept at bay begins to break free and be set loose upon the world. There are weird storms and unexplainable weather phenomena throughout the globe that threaten to tear apart the planet and its ecosystem. Blinded by rage against the people who wronged him, Devereaux tragically ignores Lara's pleas and uses the powers of the stones, which overwhelm him, resulting in his transformation into a monster. The final episode culminates with Lara and Rot's daughter, Camilla, who battled the now rampaging Devereaux. One of the stones manages to penetrate Lara's sight, attempting to take hold of her, but our heroine is able to push back its influence by making peace with her past and coming to terms with her trauma. Devereaux is defeated, but the world is still not out of danger, as Lara must return the stones back to where they were created. In order to do so, she journeys to the Cumlin Mountains to the altar of the goddess who created the stone. There, after another set of trials, she manages to place the stones in their rightful place. The goddess appears before them, and the stones disappear along with her. The unnatural phenomena around the world is stopped as normalcy is restored. Oh yeah, they kill a dinosaur on their way back because, well, why wouldn't they? Although I don't understand how a T-Rex looking dinosaur made its way all the way up to the mountains in China. With the world now finally saved, Lara attends Jonah and Abby's wedding and seemingly embraces the ordinary civilian life. However, the show ends on a cliffhanger when she receives a call from her friend Sam, who she hadn't heard from in ages, possibly setting up the events for season two. What are the Stones of Peril? The Stones of Peril were mythical artifacts created by the Chinese goddess Nua in order to bring balance to the chaotic primordial world. The stones were hidden in far-flung corners of the world so that their powers would never be wielded by mortal hands, which would risk chaos to be unleashed once again in the world. These stones trapped the four greatest evils known to man, power, wrath, greed, and betrayal. The stones themselves aren't inherently evil as they entrap these vices within them. The true evil lies in the heart of the individual that desires them for their own benefit. They are ultimately returned to their place of origin where they vanish forever from the face of the earth. Here to cut off your heads. I'm here to infect. Who is Charles Devereaux? Charles Devereaux is the primary antagonist of the Tomb Raider Legend of Lara Croft series. He is presented to us as a foil to Lara Croft because they share a very similar backstory. While initially painted as a generic villain who wants the ancient items to make himself more powerful to fulfill his selfish desires as the show progresses we learn that Charles Devereaux's motivations are far more complicated than just that. Just like Lara, he lost his father to a secret organization called The Light, which is very much reminiscent of the Trinity, the primary antagonistic group of the series that is responsible for Lara's father's death. This caused the mercenary to undergo rigorous training and research in order to exact his revenge. He means to take the stones of peril and use their powers to destroy the Cabal that ruined his life and took his father from him. Devereaux recognizes the parallels between Croft's life and his. Lara warns him against the dangers of pursuing vengeance as she is all too familiar with that feeling. He shares her own experience, stating that even if Devereaux would manage to get his revenge, she would not find peace unless he reconciled with his own soul. Lara tells him how she values her friends and their loyalty to each other more than anything in the world, and that is what truly matters. Devereaux is, however, too far gone by then and ignores Lara's words, transforming into a monstrosity. His character goes to show us the fate that would probably have awaited Lara if she too had remained on her path of guilt and self-loathing. Lara was able to reconcile with herself thanks to the people around her saving her, allowing her to return to becoming the adventure that we love and adore. Are you okay? Sam, is she okay? Who is Sam and what does the ending of the show mean? Samantha Nishimura is a character who are introduced to us in the first installment of the Tomb Raider video game trilogy. She is Lara's best friend and she works as a filmmaker who follows Lara on her various adventures. Samantha, or Sam as she's called by those close to her, is responsible for capturing the documentary regarding the lost Isle of Yamatai, which is the setting for the events of the first game. She is shipwrecked and separated from the rest of the crew on the island where she is captured by a man named Matthias, who led a fanatical group 
group called the Solari Brotherhood that was dedicated to resurrecting the long-dead shaman queen Himiko from the Japanese legends. Matthias intended to offer Sam as a vessel for the queen's soul as Sam was half Japanese descent. Lara, however, interrupts this nefarious plot by interrupting the ritual just as Himiko's soul is being transferred to her friend. She defeats Matthias and destroys the corpse of Himiko, rescuing the day. However, we later find out through the comics that Himiko had already transferred her soul into Sam, causing her to go through a series of misadventures before the queen's soul is extracted. So as such, Sam is a recurring character in this franchise who is very close to the protagonist. During the events of the Tomb Raider Legend of Lara Croft series, we know that she was busy on another adventure. However, at the end of the show, Lara visits her apartment suspecting foul play after she receives a cryptic drop call from her friend. Once at the apartment, she finds it ransacked, with Sam nowhere in sight. This leads us to the assumption that whatever Sam was working on was dangerous enough for her to be kidnapped by those who did not wish her to succeed. This is more than likely going to be the premise for the next season of Tomb Raider's animated series, if it does receive one. We could very much see the return of a resurgent trinity, the nefarious group that serves as the primary antagonist of the games. With Lara now having made peace with herself, it will be interesting to see how she deals once again with the ghosts of her past. But no matter what, we believe it will be another gripping adventure, and we do hope the show gets a second season indeed. Marvelous Verdict The show is a decent offering at best and will surely appeal to the already existing Tomb Raider fans, while also doing a decent job of bringing in new fans to the series as well. However, this is not to say that the series is without flaws, and boy, there are a lot of them. For a studio that is responsible for the animations behind Castlevania, which boasts some of the most crisp and fluid animations and fight scenes, Tomb Raider Legend of Lara Croft doesn't quite hit those lofty marks. Don't get us wrong though, the animations are not bad, but they aren't great either but they just about do the job. The plot has never really been the strongest part of the Tomb Raider franchise, and this is a mid-level plot at best. If you're going to this show expecting some deep-seated drama and plot twists which will leave you thinking about the show days after you're done with it, then you'll probably be sorely disappointed. The series is a classic tale of redemption and good versus evil. It has an okay plot, and thankfully the show delivers in a satisfactory manner. We also get to see Lara Croft in a new guise, which is somewhat a cross between her appearance from the classic games and the reboot under Crystal Dynamics. This could very well be the look that the game studio intends to use in any future Tomb Raider games. If not, it would surely appear as a bonus DLC unlockable content. The show deals with a very important theme regarding preservation and theft as Lara and her father are accused of stealing these important relics from around the world by many in the name of preservation. The show deals with how she resolves this issue amongst many others that plague her. Legend of Lara Croft really shines when dealing with these more humane themes themes as Lara grapples with her guilt of the past, feelings of abandonment, and trauma. These scenes are, however, present far and few in between, with the show mostly focusing on action sequences. There is plenty to enjoy as a Tomb Raider fan, especially if you have played all three of the games. However, the show does a poor job of explaining some of the backstories and flashbacks, which would make no sense to someone who is just jumping into this show blind without any prior knowledge. We still hope this show gets a second season that spans of the franchise, but for now though, we've come to the end of this video. We thank you for sticking with us right to the end, and we truly appreciate your support. For more videos regarding anything pop culture related, such as TV shows, movies, and anime, check out our channel. We post new videos daily, so be sure to stay tuned. And this has been a blast. We hope to see you in our next video. Until then, stay safe and stay marvelous. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.